Well, good evening, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here. It's the 24th of September here, Saturday evening, the first full weekend of fall, and it actually feels like fall out there. And uh, it's also feeling like the hurricane season's got to come to life here for sure. We have five tropical systems out there. Hermine actually uh, decided to form quickly off of Africa, so uh, that means the bigger threat for the U.S. is going to be Ian. Ian's formed there in the Central Caribbean, and unfortunately, it's going to become a major hurricane and uh, definitely almost a certainty of landfall here in the U.S. Uh, here this week. Right now, the official hurricane track uh, here again, the chart left here is the Hurricane Center projecting a major Cat 3 hurricane, uh, pretty much impacting the west coast of Florida. A little bit of a look at the track uncertainty here because there is some uncertainty here. And the USGFS model is definitely a little more west with the system. Euro European model is actually a little bit closer for uh, the west coast of Florida here. But uh, nonetheless, Thursday is the time frame that we'd be very concerned here for pretty much anywhere in the Panhandle of Florida all the way down toward Tampa Bay. Models that got in uh, being very certain that uh, pretty much every model shows a direct hit for the U.S. here uh, later this week. This is the model uncertainty. So the chart left here is just the tracks. You can see it's all over the place from New Orleans to uh, maybe Naples, Florida. Uh, the official track is that black line, which you can see is pretty much to the east of almost all the model guidance. So maybe a little bit too far east. Sometimes the Hurricane Center likes to center it directly toward the biggest population center that would be tampa um, but again uh, we'll see about that but tampa certainly is in the crosshairs at this uh, point in time the model intensity uh, chart bottom right here shows that uh, pretty much all the guidance is in the cat 3 cat 4 range uh, as we would approach uh, florida here um, thursday uh, next week we look at the current uh, wave height forecast so here in um, um, florida we'd be looking at uh, Oh, 10 to 15 foot waves uh, in the Tampa Bay area. If this track were to hold, even if the track doesn't hold, it's still going to have some big waves uh, across the west coast of Florida. There in the center, obviously, you can see there's upwards of 30 foot waves. Um, now, again, these are waves on top of the storm surge. So again, we got to talk about that next. So storm surge really is just the, the wave of water. It's just a wall of water that the ocean just basically lifts up. Uh, so that tidal surge right now, according to this group here, uh, Sierra, is projecting a 10 plus foot storm surge. So 10 to 15 foot waves on top of a 10 foot water just lifting up is about 25 feet of, of water for Tampa Bay. So let's hope this scenario doesn't happen. Tampa has dodged a bullet for 174 years. The last major hurricane uh, to take a direct hit was back in 1848. And uh, I remember being stationed at McDill Air Force Base, a little peninsula right there in the middle of the bay. Uh, again, so we were always very concerned because again, it's pretty much sea level. So you pile up all that water on the right front quadrant of a, of a hurricane, especially a major hurricane, and it has nowhere to go, Tampa Bay. So it just uh, would flood the entire downtown Tampa area. Let's hope this scenario doesn't happen. This is the current official track, uh, however. Uh, unfortunately, after Ian, we have potentially another system you can see here uh, that could threaten uh, the actually the east coast of Florida later in the period here. So a lot of activity out there. Florida's always been our concern, east coast uh, this year. And, and certainly like Florida might take the brunt of this one here, the next couple uh, systems over the next uh, couple of weeks. We start here with the last week world summer here now, just this week ending here this evening. So most of this in the history book. Here in the US, we are, uh, had a warmer week, 2.2 warmer than a year ago, warmest in three years, sixth warmest in 37 years, so above average temperatures. There's a cool spot, we'd say it was in the Northeast, uh, finally cooled off and uh, California also pretty cool. Uh, cooler across Canada, cools three years. Uh, Europe, uh, a little bit misleading there. Again, Central Europe, uh, quite a bit cooler uh, and below average uh, temperatures. So again, cooler in that area. Uh, U.S. overall, again, uh, precip would be about 58% drier than last year. So driest in 18 years, fourth driest in 37 years. So again, continuing these very dry La Nina-like trends for precip. Look at this week here, week ending 1 October here, and this week ending Saturday here. Um, so what goes up, which was uh, uh, Fiona, uh, actually one of the strongest hurricanes that hit Canada. They had 100 mile an hour gust up in Nova Scotia here uh, yesterday. So again, what goes up, something comes down, that something is cold air. So here in the U.S., uh, overall, 3.2 colder than last year, 18th uh, coolest in 37 years. So near average on a national scale, but only because it's warmer west and very cool east. Definitely going to feel like fall if you live in the uh, Great Lakes, uh, Ohio Valley, northeast here this week. So it's certainly going to be a very strong seasonal sales week for our big retail customers of selling fall merchandise because uh, we're going to feel like fall. I turned my heat on this morning. It was in the 40s. Um, so again, tis the season. Precip about 5% drier than a year ago, dries in 14th years, 10th dries in 37 years. So really the only rain threat, major rain threat is going to be obviously here in the southeast. I think this is underdone dramatically because I do think we're going to get a direct hit and the models just haven't accounted for that entirely. So again, anywhere in the east from the southeast, up in the Ohio Valley, even up in here into the Pennsylvania area could have some very, very heavy rain from Hurricane Ian here later this week. 
if we look at next week here again, I, unfortunately, I think we have another threat here for Florida. The wave coming off Africa it takes about 10 days to get here. But um, again, it looks like it's heading in the general direction of uh, Florida and the southeast coast. So we'll see about that again. It's projecting the driest week in 37 plus years. I think this is a little underdone again. Um, temperatures about 2.4 cooler than last year. Still third warmest in 37 years. We'll see about that again. It just depends on the track of Ian. Again, if Ian were to go straight up the east coast, northeast, um, it could help to pull down colder weather. So this may be a little bit overdone in terms of the uh, temperature trends here. Again, it just depends on if Ian can take that trend all the way up into Canada, into the northeast, uh, then it can certainly uh, bring down some cooler weather behind it. If we just aggregate these two-week trends here, so 25 September through 8 October here, again, general th theme would be a cooler uh, eastern U.S., this big map now are trends versus average. So below average temperatures in the eastern quarter of the country, warm pretty much everywhere else. Below average temperatures there in Europe as well. Uh, map inset left here is actually temperature trends versus last year. So a much, much cooler here, late September, October period. And that's uh, good for retailers here in the heart of their Q3. They needed a strong finish here. And this will certainly help uh, after all the heat we've had as of late. So with that, folks, we hope you have a great week. Uh, we have plenty of updates here on uh, Hurricane Ian and uh, the impact here for Florida and the Gulf Coast, Northeast Gulf Coast here uh, this week. Have a great week, and we will talk to you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.